Black Lives Matter movement continues to grow. There is concern with one of the groups that helps fundraising for this organization, specifically a person who sits on the board for that organization. Joining us now to talk more about this is uh, retired New York Police Department Commissioner Bernie Carrick. Bernie, it's good to see you tonight. Thanks, Ginger. All right, well, the person at the focus of this concern by many is someone named Susan Rosenberg, and you have firsthand dealings with her. So tell me who she is and what she's done. Well, Susan Rosenberg uh, is somebody that was convicted in 1985. Um, she possessed 640 pounds of explosives. She had been involved in a number of um, criminal events in New York City. Uh, and the tri-state area. She was a member of the Weather Underground and the May 19th Communist Organization. Uh, she was sentenced to 58 years in prison. Um, and uh, she was also involved in, she was a getaway driver in a Brinks uh, armored car robbery in which two cops were killed and a, and a security guard was killed. Um, so she went to prison for 58 years and she was commuted, her sentence was commuted after 16 years by President Clinton on his last day in office. He let her out of prison. And she came out and she has spoken at numerous universities. She has, uh, you know, taught uh, in different uh, schools. And uh, she recently obtained a position uh, as uh, on the board of directors for a fundraising group um, that does all the fundraising or a substantial amount of it for Black Lives Matter. And, um, you know, the problem I have with this is nobody's really paying attention to the organization of Black Lives Matter um, in, in a much broader and bigger picture. So you have a terrorist, uh, a convicted terrorist, somebody that wanted the uh, overthrow of the United States government, somebody that um, was anti-capitalism, uh, anti-American back in the 60s, 70s and early 80s. Um, she's now working for Black Lives Matter whose founders, whose founders were inspired by a woman by the name of Joanne Chesimard. Joanne Chesimard, who today goes by the African name of Sada Shakur, she lives in Cuba in exile after she executed a New Jersey state trooper and was involved in a number of bombings and uh, robberies back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Um, 60s and 70s, I should say. She was captured uh, in 1973 after she killed a trooper on the New Jersey Turnpike. Um, she escaped from prison eventually in 1979 and she's been in Cuba ever since. That was, she was the inspiration for Black Lives Matter. And you have a terrorist that was affiliated with her um, who does their fundraising. So I think, you know, what I see is somebody that was involved in law enforcement at that time. In fact, Susan Rosenberg, when she was convicted, I actually had to escort her. I was the commander of the Passaic County SWAT team. Um, I had to escort her to and from trial um, during that time. So as somebody that's been there, that lived through those times, I see history repeating itself. What is Black Lives Matter? They're a radical left-wing revolutionary group that wants the overthrow of this government. Um, they're not really about black lives. They're not concerned with black lives because if they were, They'd be in Chicago marching every night. They'd be in Baltimore. They'd be in Cleveland. They'd be in Milwaukee or Minnesota. Or I can give you 20 other cities that are run by Democrats in this uh, in this country that have the highest crime rate, the highest violence rate, uh, and the highest murder rates. Uh, right, and who's you, being murdered? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, and I want to because we got I, I want to address some of these right off the bat. Um, so she's high level in the BLM, and you call the BLM a terrorist organization that the government needs to investigate. Uh, give me some right. examples for why. Well, because of their affiliations of what they do. Here, here's uh, here's some of the things. Um, keep in mind, every one of the protests, um, you know, in the aftermath of George Floyd, um, how many protests were there? I can't, I can't say the exact number, but they happened in 44 states, in 44 states, and I think it was about 76 cities. These protests were all organized, the majority of them were organized by Black Lives Matter. What was the end result? About 700 law enforcement officers that were injured. You had 15, and this is in a two-week period, you had 15 people that were killed 
um, during those uh, protests, uh, which turned into riots, um, you had substantial arson, you had um, looting lawlessness uh, in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And nobody can tell me, nobody can tell me, especially given what I know and the jobs I've done, this was a fluke. This was co coincidental. This was extremely or organized. It was um, it, it was something that was put together in mass, uh, and it was done in conjunction with Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Um, so between these two groups, and this would uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about: history repeating itself. All these organizations that was affiliated with Rosenberg and Chesimard back in the 60s and 70s, whether it was the Black Liberation Army, the Black Panther Party, the FALN, the May 19th Communist Organization, the Weather Underground, all of them, they eventually went underground because their criminal activity resulted in law enforcement going after them. That's what you're going to see right now. That's what's happening right now. You have the Attorney General, 56 different joint terrorist task forces around the United States working in conjunction with the FBI are looking at all of the events that happened where you had these murders, these cops being assaulted, you had arson, you had the destruction of property. Um, it's all being investigated by the Bureau. So eventually, these people too will go underground. But the associations between the people of yesteryear and the people of today it's just too overwhelming for it to be a coincidence. You know, you brought up the police department, and I'd like to get, I mean, obviously your commissioner, former uh, retired commissioner of NYPD, you brought up defunding the, the police departments because that's what we hear a lot of at these uh, protests. Weigh in on what defunding a police department actually means. Well, it, you know, it could mean a couple of things. It could mean you reduce funds, it could mean you eliminate funds, or it could mean you basically eliminate the department. Depends on which one of these lunatics you're talking to, um, you know, in, in what and in what capacity they are. But at the end of the day, here's what happens. If you defund in, and diminish or diminish uh, the funding to a police department in any department around this country, you're going to lose manpower and resources to go out into the streets and police those streets. Well, ironically, all these crazy people that are saying defund the police, they're doing it in cities where you have the highest crime rate, where you have the most violent crime rate, where you have the highest murder rates. Chicago, you have, enough, you have more shootings and murders on a weekend than you have in Iraq. Okay, you don't want to defund the police or diminish their budget in any way. In fact, what you want to do is you want to create a federal task force in conjunction with those departments to basically go after the bad guys, get the guns off the streets, go after the gangs, go after the drugs. That's not what they're doing. They want to defund and diminish. The, the, the unfortunate thing here, Ginger, is you know who suffers? You know who really suffers? The black community because that's where the violent crime is the highest. That's where the murder rates are the highest. So you can diminish, you can defund all you want. Who's gonna suffer? Those communities are gonna suffer. Very interesting words tonight, Bernie. Uh, history repeating itself, definitely giving us a lot to think about. I really appreciate your time tonight. Ginger, thank you. All right, be well.